What an emotional evening. I mean, you just tore me up. Right after, this, right after Aaron broke me down. <laughs> Man, how do I follow that? Um, it's incredible seeing James when I first met him. Uh, he had a shaved head, uh, a scowl. We used to run across the fields of the facilities to attack an enemy. And from seeing him come home, start the organization, graduate from UCLA, and now hire hundreds of people at the Yerba Mate company who are system impacted, um, hats off to you, brother. I love you, man. And to, to everyone, obviously the folks who run the Southern Center, but for everyone who are the boots on the ground, doing the work, saving lives, um, I'm so indebted to you. Uh, this has been one of the most inspirational evenings, so thank you for having me. Ten, ten years before I met James, um, I, I had just done a um, social impact film that changed many lives called Old School. <laughs> and... Um, a producer on that film invited me down to a juvenile hall to um, be a guest speaker in a creative writing program. And I sat at a table with 15 kids facing life sentences and the kids sitting to the left of me, this little cool kid with a cool mohawk named David, I asked him how his week was and he said it was a really bad week. I just got sentenced to 300 years to life. And it turned out it was an, he was an aider and a better. It was a felony murder case. Um, and he was about to leave for an adult prison. On the other side of the table, Adam Avila looked like he was 11 years old, going to state prison, adult prison, uh, for six years for a robbery. And that day just broke my heart. And I, I realized, as I heard the stories around that table, um, that hurt people hurt people. And that these young people had an incredible ability to transform, to change. Um, and I made the commitment on that day to start teaching that class and to be in their lives, whether it was for 300 years until my wheels fall off or um, for a few years. And I started teaching that class every Saturday. And that took me on a crazy journey um, into the state prison system, into the juvenile justice system. Six years later, young Adam got out of prison and became our prop intern on The Hangover. <laughs> and I said to Adam, just run circles around everybody, and he showed up an hour early every day. Day one, we were on the roof of Caesar's Palace starting at 6 a.m. He showed up at 5. He had an attitude of gratitude. He worked harder than everybody. At the end of it, my prop master said, that's the greatest person I've ever hired. I'm taking him to Iron Man. I'm putting him in the union. He's going from $12 an hour to $48 an hour. Adam now makes $200,000 a year. His four brothers are in the union. Together, they make about $800,000 a year, and they just bought his family a house. And that was just the beginning. Um, I was able after the last Hangover film and feeling like I was getting so much out of the work I was doing in, in jails, prisons, and juvenile halls and with these incredible young people uh, to leave the film business and start an organization called ARC, the Anti-Recidivism Coalition. And it was the best five years of my life. Um, we were able to inspire. We started with 150 members, all formerly incarcerated, all system impacted. Today we have 1,600 members. We started with three employees, including James, and now we have 63 employees and a $7 million budget. And it has just been incredible watching the leadership um, of system impacted folks change the game. We provide reentry services and a community for folks coming home. But I've watched these folks go to, the, to Sacramento, meet with Governor Brown, meet with Governor Newsom. Eight of our members who are all formerly incarcerated serve on uh, uh, governor appointments on various juvenile justice and state prison boards. Um, we were able to pass with their leadership 14 different bills, um, which took 20,000 young people who were sentenced to die in prison and now give them a chance of parole. And because of those bills, young David Negretti, who got 300 years to life, I was able to go visit him at Ironwood State Prison and let him know his sentence has been reduced to 25 to life. And then last year, right before leaving our office, Governor Brown commuted his sentence after his multiple college degrees, and he comes home next month. I commend the Southern Center's work on the juvenile justice issues. I really commend the work on solitary confinement. 
One of the deepest moments of my life after we passed a bill called SB 260, which ended juvenile life sentences, I went up to Pelican Bay State Prison, one of the most notorious prisons in California where we, keep, where we had kept men in solitary confinement for over 35 years. And we were doing an incredible woman named Elizabeth Calvin at Human Rights Watch had written this bill and we had set up a seminar to talk to every man in solitary confinement that now qualified for this bill to let them know that they now have hope. And I remember sitting in front of a cage and talking to a 65 year old man that came in when he was 16 years old and had been in solitary confinement for 31 years. And I let him know this bill just passed and his sentence was now reduced and he goes to the parole board in the next three years. And this man who was known in a prison that houses the worst of the worst started weeping. And he said, this is the first day in my life I've ever felt hope. And I stuck my little pinky finger through the hole in the cage and we shook pinkies. It's called the Pelican Bay Shake. And he said, you're the first person I've touched in 30, 31 years. And that man ended up getting out of solitary confinement, went to Ironwood State Prison. I saw him there. He said, Scott, can I be the math tutor because I got a math college degree in solitary confinement. He became the math tutor in the college program where he helped over 600 kids graduate and get their GEDs as a math tutor. He went to the parole board after 40 plus years in prison, got found suitable, came home, and now he works as a community health worker helping homeless people coming out of the county jail in downtown LA. I also realized, and lastly realized, um, through the work at ARC and the bills we passed, we passed it because we had incredible people who were transformed telling stories of transformation and hope and creating human relationships. And as I saw these videos tonight, as I heard Aaron tonight, um, I realize that I have, I have the ability, when I made The Hangover, they spent $100 million marketing the film around the world. And so I spent the last couple years um, while I was at ARC starting a uh, film and television company to tell stories around these issues uh, to make an impact and to change hearts and minds. And our first investment, we raised $50 million and our first investment was into Just Mercy. And I, I can't wait for every, everyone in this room to see the film. And uh, if you'd like to buy out a theater for a screening for your law firm or for kids that can't afford it, I'm happy to help with that. Um, but the film is utterly spectacular. Um, Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx, and Brie Larson are behind Brian Stevenson to celebrate him and to do this work. They are in this to make an impact. Their hearts are all into this, and this is much more than promoting a movie for them. They are coming into prisons. Um, they are doing the work. We are doing a prison screening series. We're running the largest social impact campaign ever around the release of a film. And all of our actors, celebrities who are not our actors, are, are getting involved. We've just started a governor's screening series and we're screening for, right now we have 14 different governors set. We screened for Gavin Newsom um, uh, a few weeks ago. He came out crying, this is our governor of California, and said, I wanna do commutations, and two weeks later commuted 21 sentences, seven life without parole. So we deeply uh, believe this is a movie that can change people. We did research screenings, a normal movie test at a 75, which means 75% of the people in the test audience, 500 or so people, rate the movie excellent or very good. Just Mercy was a 97. When we brought the film to Kansas City and screened it for a majority white audience, we wondered how much it was gonna go down. It went up to a 98. Um, people wrote on their research cards afterwards, I came into the screening believing in the death penalty and I leave believing it's, a, it's horrible, um, multiple people. So I thank you guys for the work you're doing, um, for lifting up these stories of absolutely incredible, transformed human beings and a deeply unjust system. And I'm honored to be here. God bless you all.